In this video, we're going to be talking about the Photoshop Custom Shape Tool. Now, I often get the question is, what do I do with custom shapes? How do I load them? And more importantly, once I get them loaded into Photoshop, how do I access them in Photoshop? So let's start kind of backwards and let's talk about how you access them in Photoshop. Because how do we even know you really want to load them if you don't know how to use them and access them in Photoshop? So first things first, where do I find the custom shape tool? Well, if you look here in the Photoshop toolbar on the left, uh, I'm using Photoshop CS5, but, and then way right down here is your custom shape tool. Now you see this U? What that basically means is by hitting the, the, the letter U on our keyboard, it would take us right to our shape tools. From there, I could hold Shift U, and I could actually cycle through all the way down. Now if you look at the little preview icon now it almost looks like what I call a little starfish. But let's go back to our rectangle tool because this is the most common way that I use it when we're talking about being productive. So I'm in my marquee tool, I'm in my move tool, whatever tool I happen to be in at the moment, I simply hit the letter U on my keyboard that takes me right to my shape tools and up here on the options bar is my starfish. As soon as I click on that starfish, boom, right here is where I would access the custom shapes that I currently have loaded. Now let's take a look at this. If I open that up, you can see that I have these custom shapes. Now your copy of Photoshop probably isn't going to look quite like this. We're going to make a couple of changes that are very important when working with custom shapes. There's a little tiny itty bitty arrow that points to the right, so go ahead and click on that and up will come this option and what we want to choose is the large thumbnail option by default you got little tiny itty bitty thumbnails which are too tiny to really see what the heck we're doing so switch to large thumbnail gives you the biggest preview available and this window you can make as big as you want so I kinda go you know uh, halfway there uh, and show a nice collection of custom shapes all at one time. Now again if we click on that little arrow to the right you're gonna see see all these photo perks, photo perks, photo perks those are all uh, custom shapes that we've created here at Pixel Creator Pro. Um, you see lots of different ones um, but the ones that come with Photoshop are these animals and arrows and artistic textures and shapes so if I click on shapes it says do I want to replace the, the current shapes sure I'll go ahead and replace the existing shapes and then I get this beautiful collection of shapes that is almost completely worthless but these come with Photoshop and then I can change those shapes to say photo blocks volume 2 and I can either replace the existing ones or choose the append option which would leave the existing shapes and just add the new shapes that I loaded oftentimes novice Photoshop users will load lots and lots of shapes into their custom shapes palette at one time and I recommend only using the shapes or only having those shapes loaded which you intend to use right now no point in having all of these shapes loaded these default Photoshop shapes if we're not intending to use them on a regular basis so good rule of thumb have one collection of shapes open at a time it's, you don't have to do it that way. It just bogs down Photoshop if we just load up 1,500 shapes uh, because it has to actually generate this little tiny thumbnail for us every time we want to look at those custom shapes. Same is true with brushes or Photoshop actions. If you've ever noticed, you get lots of actions loaded into Photoshop. It takes forever for Photoshop to load up. That's because Photoshop has to load all those action sets, whether you're using them or not at the moment. So, always a good rule of thumb. Don't have content loaded into Photoshop if you really not intend to use it right away. All right, so that's how we get to the custom shapes inside Photoshop. Now, once we're in here, how do we actually use them? Well, it couldn't be more simple. If, for example, I, let's just take this basic circle shape. If I draw it out, notice I can make this shape kind of ver vertical. I can make it horizontal. I can also constrain it to the original proportions. So just like with our 
selection tool, a marquee selection tool, if I make a selection, it, if I hold down my shift key, it constrains it to a perfect square. Same is true with my elliptical marquee. I can make an oval, or if I hold down my shift key, boom, snaps to a perfect circle. Okay? So with custom shapes, it works the exact same way. If I hold down my shift key and drag out the shape, it's a perfect circle, or it's a perfect original copy. So for example, let's take a moon shape, for example. Okay, it's not really a circle, um, but if I hold down my shift key, constraints to the perfect proportions it was originally drawn at. Or I can make an odd shaped moon if I wanted to as well by not holding my shift key. So that is key depending on whether you want to accept the original proportions, hold the shift key, or if you want to freehand draw, don't hold the shift key. So once we are in our custom shape tool, we could just have a merry time creating all kinds of moons, and every time we draw a new shape, you get a new shape layer. At least that's the default behavior. Now there's lots of options when it comes to using custom shapes that we're not going to cover in this video. So definitely check out our other videos on working with custom shapes because I could probably talk for three days on all the various options with custom shapes and all the really cool things you can do with them. Um, but the purpose of this video is just to cover the basics when it comes to working with custom shapes. So we know now the proper way to access our custom shape tool, correct? We simply hit the U key and come up here, hit the little starfish, and then directly to the right we can access the custom shapes we have loaded. To load custom shapes, little tiny arrow to the right. We can choose from the list of custom shapes here, or we could also choose the option to load shapes. Save shapes, replace the existing shapes, or reset the shapes to the factory default. These are the factory Photoshop defaults. Okay, so we know all of that. Now, how do we actually get our custom shapes to appear in this list? And that is what we're going to talk about next. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've seen how to access the custom shape tool in Photoshop and how to create basic shapes and some of the basic options when it comes to working with the custom shape tool in Photoshop. But how do we actually load the shapes into Photoshop so they appear in that drop down menu uh, when we're using our custom shape tool in Photoshop? So what we're going to do, now I'm on a Windows system, so I'm going to come into my computer, come to my C drive, and I'm going to come into either Program Files or Program Files x86. Now, because I have the x86 folder, that tells you that I'm using a 64-bit operating system. Now, there is an important note to make. When you're installing custom shapes, in CS5, we have an option to install both a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. And I presume that's going to be that way for some time. Certain plugins do not work in a 64-bit environment. And so we have to use Photoshop in its 32-bit environment. Of course, there's certainly an advantage to using the 64-bit version of Photoshop for our day-to-day -day work, because if we're in 64-bit, we can use more than 4 gigabytes of RAM on a PC system. And most computers these days, especially computers for professionals, are using 6, 8, even more uh, gigabytes of RAM. So using a 64-bit platform certainly has its advantages. But the point to make in loading custom shapes and brushes and so forth, if we want to have access to those custom shapes when we're working in the 32-bit environment, we have to install it in each version of Photoshop. So first things first, let's open up the program files x86. Let's go into Adobe and let's choose Photoshop CS5 folder. You can see I have a bunch of different versions of Photoshop installed on my testing machine here. But we'll come into the CS5 folder. And if you look in here, there's a folder called Presets. In our Presets folder, there's many subfolders. If we had third party brushes, we would place those in the Brushes folder. But our custom shapes are going to come here into the custom shapes folder. So you see, I have a bunch of custom shapes. Everything that says photo perks, photo perks, photo perks, photo perks, that is 
custom shapes that we've developed here at Pixel Creator Pro and we call our custom shapes and textures photo perks. So these all end with a CSH extension. That is the default extension for custom shapes inside Photoshop. So you can see that all these are loaded. So when we're downloading custom shapes on the internet or if you purchased our photo perks vector design collection, this is where you need to insert all of those CSH files. The rest of these are default uh, files that are part of Photoshop. So you have the banners and awards and artistic textures and arrows and animals and all that stuff is part of the Photoshop custom shapes that come with Photoshop by default. So you see all those are in place. That's where you need to place them. Now if we back up, let's go back to our C drive and go into program files, go back to Adobe, you notice that there still is a CS5 folder, but it's the 64-bit version. So if we open that up, come into presets, and again into custom shapes, and again, all those custom shapes are also loaded into the custom shapes folder on the 64-bit side. So your program files x86, that's the 32-bit version, load them in there, and then load them back over in the standard program files which houses all of our 64-bit uh, programs on a 64-bit system. Now if you're using a Mac it's the same process. You have the exact same configuration. The only difference of course is on a Mac you're going to have your main uh, Macintosh hard drive, you're going to have an applications folder, and then in that applications folder you're going to have a Photoshop directory. You're not going to have an Adobe directory and then a Photoshop directory like we do here on a PC. It'll be applications, Photoshop, presets, find your custom shapes folder, dump everything in there. Now once you've done all of that and you've restarted Photoshop, then those custom shapes will appear in that drop down menu when you click on that little arrow to the right to open up and load a custom shape inside Photoshop. And that's all there is to it. So now we know how to access our custom shape tool in Photoshop. We need to know how to load a custom shape set in Photoshop. We know some basic operations of using shapes in Photoshop. And of course, we know how to now properly load those custom shapes so they appear in the drop down menu when we're inside Photoshop. So check out the other videos we have on custom shapes because there's lots and lots of features to working with custom shapes, very powerful design stuff that you need to know. And once you know it, you're going to find all kinds of uses for your custom shapes. Thanks for watching.